Hi everyone, today with me I have Ani Kolka and we are going to be talking about the learning design principle of adaptability. Hi Ani, thanks for joining me. Hi Lisa, great to be here. So Ani, tell us what we're going to be learning about today. Yeah, so the best practices for learning design and adaptability include personalizing the learning experience based on your learner's preferences, prior knowledge and learning pace, and offering adaptive learning paths or branching scenarios to cater to your individual learning needs. Okay, so when we started preparing for this topic, you gave me this long list of ideas you wanted to run through. This look like your list? Yep. Okay, well, we'll start moving down that list. So what made you think about using prerequisites? Well, one of the recommendations is to personalize learning based on your user's prior knowledge. So you just want to make sure your users have a good grasp of the basics before they jump into more complex materials. Well, that makes sense. So how does a learning administrator set up prerequisites for learning content? It's pretty simple. So here we have a learning plan called Advanced Staff Development, but we don't want users to access it until they take the basic learning plan. So here you can see a section called Prerequisites. Just click on new and you can select any pre-created learning, including a learning plan, but it could also be a learning object like a quiz that the user has to pass before accessing the learning plan. So that seems simple enough. And so how is that different from your other idea about equivalencies? So equivalencies give learners the opportunity to choose the type of learning that they'd like to take. So one example is that a learner might choose to attend a face-to-face -face class, what we'd call an ILT event, and another might decide to go through an equivalent learning plan. And while this allows users to exercise their preference, it can also help with users who work remote or need to review content multiple times. So you're really meeting them where they are. Well, that would be me. I mean, I love face-to-face -face classes, but I don't always absorb the content as sometimes I just space out while thinking about something that was said, and then I'll miss what the speaker's talking about. So self-paced really allows me to review this content as often as I need to. Yeah, and I often prefer face-to-face -face because it can be more hands-on, more social, and allow me to talk directly to the teachers and classmates. Okay, so other than live training versus self-paced, what other ways have you seen clients use equivalencies? So similar to prerequisites, some clients use equivalencies to offer a way to test out of learning. So you can set a quiz as one item and the learning plan as the equivalency. I've also had clients use equivalencies for the same content in different languages. For example, I may be a native Spanish speaker, but might prefer to take the class in English. So I assume equivalencies are also easy to make. Yeah. On a learning track, plan, object, or ILT event, you'll see a side widget called equivalencies. Just select new and follow the screens to choose the equivalent learning. Okay. Another idea you had for adaptability was using this feature called Next Best Learning. So what is this and then how does it work? So Next Best Learning dynamically pushes the next learning to a user when they've either registered for or completed a learning. So can you share with us a scenario about this? Yeah, let's say a user completes an introductory course that they're interested in. As soon as they complete the learning, Opinium can automatically assign the next piece of learning, and the learning admin gets to determine what piece that is. So how do you set that up in Opinium? It's pretty consistent with the prerequisite and equivalency experiences. So you start on the item that you want to be assigned next and click on new by next best learning to select the learning item that will precede it. So let's switch over to this whole idea of pacing. How do you allow learners to learn at their own pace? Yeah, that one's simple enough. All of our learning plans are designed to be self-paced out of the box. We also recommend that you allow users to watch video at the speed they desire. So for example, someone might get bored at normal speed and wanna watch it at 1.5. Um, if the concepts are difficult to understand, the learner can slow it down or stop and rewatch it. That's the beauty of online video-based learning. So do you have clients who just turn off that ability for learners to adjust the playback speed? Yeah, some don't want users to speed through it just to be done but we recommend that you have assessments often to ensure that they're capturing the learning. Just sitting through a video is not great evidence of understanding. 
I agree. But we'll look more closely at that in our next session about assessment. Okay, so how else do you cater to individual learning needs? Does everyone have to see the same content? No, and that's the power of Opinion being native to Salesforce. We have learning sharing rules that can be based on any data on a user record. These sharing rules will ensure that the user sees what they need to see based on their unique attributes. Okay, can you give me an example of that? Yeah, let's say on the user record, it says they bought a specific product and that they're located in a specific country. Sharing rules for that learning may just be for users in France who bought ABC product. And the sky's really the limit on how that can be accomplished. Okay, well, we'll stop there on segmenting learning then. All right, so how do you build out branching scenarios? So if you mean within the learning itself, there are many tools out there that create branching content with scenarios. Articulate Rise has a really simple interactive tool for that. Yes, I like Rise for interactive scenarios, but I've also started working with H5P for building out branching scenarios. And once you develop the content, I assume you can export these and then import into Opinium, right? Yeah, Opinium supports the importing of both SCORM and H5P files. So, Lisa, I know you've been working on a project for recommended content and the flow of work using the Opinion for Revenue Enablement package. Can you describe some of the adaptability features in Revenue Enablement? I sure can. So, the final way to provide content adapted and personalized for a learner is through recommended content based on the record that he is accessing. So this functionality was developed primarily for a salesperson to access content that he or she can consume as a learner or send to a prospective customer. So in this case, the salesperson has opened an opportunity that is in the qualification stage and recommended content can be tagged to display when the opportunity is at that stage or even on any other field such as main competitor. And this type of recommended content is going to continue to expand with applying artificial intelligence like Einstein in the mix. Oh, I love that. Thank you. It's my new favorite feature. So, Ani, that's all the time we have today. Thank you so much for sharing your ideas on how to apply the principles of adaptability in your learning design. Thank you, Lisa. Always great chatting with you. So join us next time. The topic will be assessments.